Hey guys, it's Aaron Laurie. Thought we'd share with you some of the things that we've learned hanging out here in Puerto Escondido for a little while now. We've been here for almost five weeks. And so we're gonna share with you a few of the tips and tricks that uh, we would have found helpful if there was a video on it when we first showed up. First things first, do yourself a favor and learn some basic conversational Spanish. Mm -hmm. Is it crucial? No. But will it help you in almost every area of your life here? Yes, it will. Anywhere from hailing a taxi to ordering food and drinks, accommodations, transportation, pretty well everything, some basic knowledge of Spanish is going to help because English is not widely spoken here. ¿Hablas inglés? No. ¿No nada? No. Perdón. ¿Hablas inglés? No. Uh, ¿Hablas inglés? No. Yes, when you're in the all-inclusive resorts or some of the higher-end restaurants, more of the local people will speak some English. But as soon as you want to experience any of the real Puerto Escondido, like the town or the centro behind all of the built-up tourist areas, you'll find that English is almost never spoken. Very rarely. And it's almost always Spanish. ¿Hablas inglés? No. No, nada. No. ¿Hablas inglés? No. ¿Hablas inglés? No. ¿Hablas inglés, señor? No, nada. ¿Hablas inglés, señor? No. No. So the basic principle or idea here is that the less Spanish you speak, the higher prices you're going to be given on everything. The more Spanish you speak, the better prices you'll receive. And you'll be looked at more favorably by the locals. Understandably so. Point number two is the taxis and transportation from the airport to where you're staying or wherever you want to go. So another tip for you all, uh, this is going to depend on where you're at, your age, how much luggage you have, how interested you are in saving a few dollars. But you've just landed here at Puerto Escondido Airport. You can see it behind me. <laughs> Travelers are funneling this way and out to the taxis that are waiting. We're going to walk you through a money saving tip here. Uh, we're going to ask a cab driver here at the door how much is it to get to Playa Zicatela. And then we're going to show you another way to maybe get a lower price ride to the same spot. ¿Cuánto cuesta? ¿Sí? ¿Cuánto cuesta para ir al Playa Zicatela? Playa Zicatela, eh, 280 pesos. ¿280? Sí. Okay. Muy bien, gracias. Sí. Okay. Gracias. Since we're outside now, we can show you another option. So we just got offered 280 pesos to get a ride to Playa Zicatela. So that's a totally great option if you're maybe a little older or you can't quite walk uh, well or you just want the convenience of just getting there quick from the airport. Absolutely, take a taxi, but we're going to show you a short walk in the hot sun and you can save yourself a lot of money. It's about a five minute walk down here you guys and you'll see another group of taxis parked down just outside the airport on the main highway and we're going to chat with them a little bit and see if we can uh, get a better deal for a ride to the same place. All right, go. here we go. Plus, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Oh, and one more thing we should point out, as you can see from the film here, the sidewalk is really lovely. If you have luggage with wheels on it, it's not bumpy, it's not cobblestone, it's a beautiful paved sidewalk, just like most places you'd find, um, you know, back home or wherever you're from. And you can see the highway just up ahead of us, and we'll show you where the cabs wait just to the side on the right up ahead. Now keep in mind, if we haven't said this yet, this is if you're flying into the Puerto Escondido International Airport. Other people fly into, I don't know, Huatuco Airport, and then they've got a one or two hour drive on the highway. We just wanted to make our life a little easier. And we made a flight from Mexico City to Puerto Escondido uh, International Airport. That way we were literally two minutes from the actual town where we were gonna stay. And so now you can see us approaching the highway here and there's one taxi waiting right now and we'll just go ask him how much for a ride to the same place. Hola, señor. Hola, amiga. Buenas, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Gracias. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien. Bien, gracias. ¿Cómo, ¿Cuánto cuesta un uh, paseo para el Playa Zicatela, por favor? Un paseo, nada más ir a uh, puro paseo o dejarlos ahí en Playa Zicatela. Sola, eh, ¿Cuánto vale un taxi para ir al Playa Zicatela? Playa Zicatela nada más, le vale 150. 150. Uh -huh. 
150. Okay, un dirección, dos personas o No, sí, las dos personas sí. Okay. Una dirección, 150. 150. 150. Okay. Sí, ah, hablas inglés. Poquito. Poquito, poquito. muy bien. Okay. Okay. Gracias. Uh, Vamos a piensa. Ya yeah, yo pensar. Okay. Aquí. Sí, okay. Gracias. Hasta 120 te cuadra. 120. 120 pesos. Okay. Gracias. Thank you. We will. Vamos a piensar. Okay. Gracias, señor. We um, obviously we're doing this for informational purposes. We've already arrived a month ago to Puerto. You could get a taxi right at the door of the airport and then a taxi on the highway. And they're very different uh, prices. So it was 280 pesos inside and 150 pesos outside, which quickly dropped to 120 pesos when we told him we want to think about it. So it's más o menos, more or less, half the price. Yeah, and we should add that likely this is due to the fact that it's one week before Christmas. So that quote of 120 pesos uh, is likely seasonal. We've heard that the going rate for a ride to Zicatella might be 50 or 60 pesos in a regular uh, time, maybe even uh, mid-season or low-season. So if there's anybody hanging out around here that can confirm that, or maybe 120 is the going rate, maybe jump into comments below and add what your thoughts are. Yeah, totally. Tell us what time of the year you came down to the Puerto International Airport and what did you pay for your taxi? And was it inside or outside of the airport? Let us know. Point number three is fruits and veg. When you get oh. to the area... <laughs> Beautiful day at the beach. <laughs> Point number three is fruits and vegetables. When you get to the area, you're going to notice a number of very large fruit and vegetable stands and it all looks and tastes very nice. We've heard that a lot of these uh, offerings are mass produced and that if you want to source out and eat locally grown, organically produced vegetables, you'll have to go a little bit farther and make an effort. Mm -hmm. One of the ways to do that is get up early in the morning and arrive to Benito Juarez Market between 6.30 and 8.30 a.m. and start asking around where the locally grown from the town's fruits and vegetables are and you'll find them. They look significantly different. Frutas y vegetales orgánico aquí? Orgánico al mer mercado aquí? Sí. Sí, ¿dónde es? Por favor. Todo lo que hay allá. Allá para allá. Allá. Buenas, ¿cómo está? Bien. Bien. ¿Tiene frutas de, de orgánico aquí o.? Ahorita nomás tengo carambolas para allá. Agua, ¿Sí? ajá, limones. Más para allá que no sabe cosa brava. Aunque no, lo, lo otros no? Sí. Son criollos, manches, son criollos, tomate. So organic? Okay. The reason why we say to get there early is because by the time 9 or 9.30 a.m. rolls around, many of the offerings have already sold out. If you've missed the market for whatever reason or simply can't make it there, there's a couple of storefronts that you might want to check out. One is called Señor Salud. We're going to take a short scooter ride to a health food store called Señor Salud. I think we found it. Right here. El Señor Salud. Organic products. Y hay frutas buenas. ¿Son todos de los pueblos? ¿Orgánico? Sí. ¿Todos? Okay, muy bien. Ah, oh, wow. And the other one is called Verde Puerto. I'm going to show you another organic fruit and veggie stand here. It's called Verde Puerto, and here we go. Uh, okay, ah, oh, you have. If any of you happen to know any other stores that sell organic produce and grains and things, please leave a comment below, we'd love to know also. When you first arrive to Puerto Escondido, it's likely to be rather hot, and you'll get thirsty pretty quickly. Like most of the other places we've been to in Mexico, it's usually not a good idea or just straight out don't drink the tap water. And so you'll be buying water in stores. Most often you'll grab a bottle of water to go at the local store, let's say a quart or a quart and a half or liter, liter and a half. And you'll usually pay somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 pesos for one of these guys. You'll go through a couple of these a day. The tip is, 
is in addition to grabbing one or two of these so you've got the bottles to refill, grab one of these bad boys as soon as you can. Believe it or not, you're paying about the same price for this at the local store as you would for this. And this five gallon jug here will hold approximately 20 one liter bottles of water. Now if you're like Lori and I, you go through two of these in one week, so that's about $40 just in water savings every week. And that's a lot of enchilada money, amigos. These guys here are pretty commonly sold at any of the little corner stores, the mini mercados, mini supers, grocery stores, uh, direct from the water store, you can get them everywhere. By using this tip and working out of this big guy into little jugs like this, you'll be using considerably less single serve plastic and the sea turtles will be singing your name in celebration. Just lightly touching on transportation in the area, there's basically everything available from huge air-conditioned buses to small vans to taxis. Uh, on the private side, you can get yourself a car or a scooter or a quad. I get 45 miles down <laughs> on this time. <laughs> You're a genius. If you're uh, here on a budget and you'd like to save some dollars on transportation, the best, most cost-effective way to get around would be the Collectivos. They look like a blue and white pickup truck, kind of like a chuck wagon blue top over them. And at the time of this recording, from what we understand, it's about eight pesos or so to get pretty well anywhere. And it's per ride. You get on a Collectivo, get in the back, and it's up to you where you get off. Wherever you get off, quick, a quick trip or a long trip, it's eight pesos. Mm -hmm. And again, this is where having some basic Spanish is going to come to your aid mm. because you'll be able to ask the driver if he goes to the location you want to go to. And you'll be able to ask him, can, hey, can you let me know when we're at this location so I know when to jump out? That will be uh, a big help to you. I'll just throw in that there's two other modes of transportation that people don't talk about, but we, we considered it, is a pedal bike, a beach bike or a gear bike. If you buy or rent one of those, Puerto is totally bikeable. The second uh, point I would bring up is on feet. That is going to be your dirt cheapest way of getting around is on two feet. Yeah. And Puerto is walkable, um, not just within the tourist zone and going out for like sushi, you know, but going into town, going to Benito Juarez Market. You can even walk to Zicatella Market. It's all walkable. You can walk to dentist's office, doctor's offices. You could walk to the airport. So as you look more into Puerto Escondido, we recommend you watch this video next. We're Aaron Laurie and this is Plan Free. If you like what we're talking about, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. And I mean, once you get used to them, they're super convenient to drink out of, you know what I'm saying? All right, now I'm soaked. Anyway, that's what I go through for you. If you like what we're talking about in these videos, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, send a couple hundred dollars to our PayPal account, you know, whatever floats your boat.